It's time for Eric Plays Beckett Episode 4. Alright, it's been a little bit since I last played Beckett. Um, let's jump in and see on game. <coughs> the city paper gave a five-star review. What are the highlights of Burroughs' prestigious insect bowl rooftop restaurant, where anyone who is anyone can sit and observe the workings of the outside world in the comfort and contrast of Novo Kuti? So, so, Beckett finds himself drawn to the place. The slow braised stuff of lamb's heart is exquisite. I love the contrast here. <coughs> uh, the contrast between a fine dining place and a giant airplane going by. Of course, they continue the uh, insect theme that this game has. Okay, hopefully this means I don't end up getting cut off, but we'll see. The Insect Bowl! <laughs> Beckett is taken to the table set for two. He knows what he wants, no need to check the menu. A pair of pregnant uppers sits nearby drinking vintage champagne. Crickets move s slowly among green leaves, their hind legs snipped, struggling in the rich garlic sauce. Not opposed to um, insect eating, but that just sounds gross. You can buy them by the dozen from the market, sold in plastic containers. At the insect bowl, they charge a darker salary for an appetizer. <coughs> so you won't believe what happened to me. Tell me! The chauffeur made a pass. He never. He did. Of course, there wasn't much time. It's still the Mexican? Oh no, I got rid of him. This one's Italian. A keeper, then. Darling, he is sublime, in every way excellent at his job. I wish I could say the same about Limsy. I did warn you. I thought the change would do me good. Mother used to tell me to try new things. I'm trying to see if there's anything about the way... This ends up, because it's all out of order, which is kind of odd, but it doesn't seem to necessarily make anything that makes sense if you read it in this new pattern here. <coughs> You know by now to stick to what you know, no? Yes, you're right as ever. Shall we order another bottle? Oh yes, the champagne is to die for. I do hope Sam is enjoying it. You know they say fetuses taste everything. Listen, they he hear what we hear. Don't you sweetums. I keep telling Olivia that she's going to be beautiful. she want for nothing. Now that is odd. Whoa. Um... Oh, weird. Okay, so this is like, um, what the fetuses are thinking here. You're by the unborn considering messages from outside. Olivia, her mother's words, beauty, walking and swaying, shouted in anger. You're uh, sometimes with screams, always the roar. Race, all men are bastards, Sammy. <clears throat> Olivia calls Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Turns to Olivia. What do you think of the taste? It makes my brain feel squirmy. I'm a little sick from it. Oh, boy. Where stands over Beckett, who scratches his teeth and checks his nails before ordering the heart large glass of Bordeaux. Flesh eating flesh achievement. <coughs> I'll start the same way. I forgot this game had the weirdest visuals. Without a future, without a past. Never asked to know, to exist, why. <laughs> Fictional worlds. 
A familiar place. Creatures of mother from in his head. All Beckett knows are stories. It's all we ever know. And here is a place for stories, told outside reality, pulling you into their frictions through imagination and hope. We all fantasize about better lives. We should go to the theater more, Beckett had suggested. To Amy, an escape from reality brought only sorrow. Smiles and laughter would only make her return to this world all the more difficult. In fictional worlds, Amy loved herself. In fictional worlds, Amy loved Beckett. In fictional worlds, Amy existed. I don't know what the... <clears throat> take a ticket for the show. Of course, that's 16 for one. Next. The future. You should book it. Most people do. Is it a sellout? No, but you know. Supporting the arts is Ezra. Having prepaid tickets helps the books. <coughs> Man by the name Peregrine Starlet came to the show the evening before. We booked. Yes, he's a regular. What of it? Was he with anyone? Sure, he was. Ucha, she was something. Black girl, dressed up to the nines. Got her here somewhere. Man leaves through a file of names, handwritten in blue ink. Here it is, Peregrine Starlet and Joan. Weird, no second name. Just Joan. Thanks for your help. No problems. Hey, you a big... Thank you for supporting the counterculture scene. The only one shitty line in this godforsaken place. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Whoa. Did he represent Age over there. All right, let's go. Little man hunched with a bowling head and over scabs and scalp. Beckett knew who it was despite the difference in appearance. In marches our valiant hero, avoiding others for a moment with his superior. <coughs> Why are you here? Congratulate you, of course. The good lady Starlight is no doubt in bed, working on her complexion, twitching and turning as our group appears to enter her flesh. <laughs> on Peregrine's tail, I'll call him in soon enough. That, my dear Beckett, is good news. It'll go some way to help you your case. Poor, poor Beckett. <coughs> Stop. And it will. Your time is almost up. You look fondly on these days. Halcyon days. Better days. Lighter days. This thing is delusional, and mine is warped by its function. <coughs> You're wrong, Bicket, as ever. Our minds are our function. But enough, piddle paddle. The play is about to begin. We should settle in and enjoy the performance. Yes, I. Do I control this? Let's see. Oh, cool. More Gallum and Deck from the chair. <coughs> One pulls at his fabric skin, while the other scratches at the insects within. Aye, aye. Aye, aye, says one. You. You, 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 says one. It's a conversation of no consequence. Picking and pulling, Morgellon finds a thread. Hey, one watches, but is distracted by the cockroaches that hiss in his ears. Morgellon picks and pulls, then his arm falls off. This is unexpected. The hell is this? For a moment, Eggbomb forgets he is host to a million tiny creatures crawling under his flesh. Only for a moment. The doctors had said their realities were false. This stuff wasn't real. Yet, here we have Morgellon, one arm down, clutching a string of cotton. Now, most people would be distressed at this outcome, as having two arms is certainly better than having one. But Morgellon is contending with different emotions. Morgellon had been right. Morgellon is right. This is important. Eggbon attains the thinker's pose, feeling the ants scurrying under the lines of his furrowed brow. He considers things, all sorts of things. He listens to the cockroaches, and they whisper truths. He looks at his hands, sees a shape smooth, the skin breaking as tiny oh, and gross. Out and wavy to the world outside. Now, most people would be distressed at this outcome, as knowing that your body is infested and being digested is, well, it's enough to make your skin crawl. Which, for Eggbomb, it does. And he smiles. Eggbomb is right. This is important. Aye, 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 says one. You, 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 says one. It's a conversation of no consequence.
That was odd. <coughs> By a drink, nothing simple. Beck is no longer part of any movement. He has purpose. No hands rest on the bar. The skin is smooth from where he wore his wedding ring. Eight years under the neon glow, he can see his household stains from the sleeve. <sighs> Can't go there, I guess I can go. Becker rests the palm of his hand against the grimy surface of the stage. Its wooden floors have seen years worth of dirt trampled to its grain. Thousands of shows. All the means of escape, a chance to see differently. Identity, disturbance. Momentary disorientation, leaping from one moment to the next. Reality, disturbance, absurdity, nothing. Beck can feel thick hairs growing out of his ears. He scrapes and scratches, time to go eat. Don't get this at all. Hey, I saw you in there. We met earlier on the flats. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry if I was short with you. That's fine. Did you find him? Peregrine, I mean? <laughs> Not yet. Assume that's why you're here, too? I suppose. Thought he might be here. He loves his place. Like it? Like it chose not to respond. Opinions can be dangerous. Okay, well, I want to ask you something. Bye, Peregrine. Please tell him to take his medication. I want to mess him with his head. Cut him open. Well... <laughs> What is it? I think the soul escapes. <coughs> he returns. Will you tell him about your baby? No, he'd not like that. But I make a brilliant mom. Single moms don't need to deal with shitty men and their shitty problems. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> huh. Poor thing. Over here. Play about two people, nothing much happens. The play board, some people act cutely, let rubbish really do something else, anything. Buster says, if anything. <coughs> Same thing. Alright, let's get out of here. Alright, I got E, no consequence. Another one of their trippy videos. Whoa. <clears throat> They're not a marked fan on the street whose name is irrelevant. Sit two men. Neither are known to Beckett or will ever become known. They turn down and listen to their ear cans. The moonlight casts the vehicle in delicate silhouette. As a northerly wind whips through the tunnels formed by houses and their concrete facades. They wait for the bedroom lights to fade. Anything else to do here? Grub crawls across the pillow and nestles into the hair of its would-be host. Mandibles put a gentle incision inside a twist of organics and wire and sack oozes a faint trail as it enters the skin. Can you hear anything? So, divorce. so <clears throat> I guess there's some kind of insect that was supposed to go in the mom of Peregrine. I vaguely remember that from last time I played. But I guess that's why we just watched the play where someone had sex under their skin. Uh, or... I think so, said Tanner. Just getting static. No, beneath that, there's something. The men move closer to the mechanical apparatus as if this action would improve the signal in some way. Starlight turns their sleep. The bug digs deeper and anchors it firmly onto her skull. <laughs> okay, I'm getting something, said Tanner. Yes, I think you're right, said Dvorsky. Starlight dreams. Hold hands with her husband. Miles, holiday, girl. Peregrine is running ahead, holding a tall plane. Oh, is he dead? But there's a picture of a kid riding a plane. Let's spin this. Telling us nothing. I wonder if that's like a meta commentary on the game.
I just covered with a black cloud. Really like cold green. Drops his plane. Starts to cry. Okay, you run back to ult. His endorse brings her head to his chest. I love you, he whispers. Izzy feels warm inside. Wrong, 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 wrong. Something's wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> Whoa. I'm home. I love you again. I'll do this again. Oh yeah, she was a model, right? Wait, wait, there's something... No, that's just... Model, I remember that. Alright, now there's something towards the middle here. Okay. Find me attractive. My only child is good. He's staying alone. George and Peregrine are gone. They no longer exist. Her bag rides. There's something inside. She takes a look. Just said. <laughs> becomes intense and the pair remove their ear pieces. Three clips. Black insect cuts and crawls from its body. Her lifeless form slumped on the bed. Down the operation. Alright, got achievement unlock death. Did they just kill her? It was the 31st July in a year that makes no difference. Beckett was young. Younger. He still saw beauty in the world. He still saw hope in the world. On seeing Amy on stage, head tipped, fingers stretched, and meandering over the piano keys, future moved into sharp focus. He saw companionship, children, a family home, steady income, laughter, color, beauty, hope. Years let in a music that filled his chest and lifted his brain, frantically reconnecting thoughts and memories to accommodate what he was feeling by means of hearing. On stage, Amy was crying. Beckett didn't know. Her tears flow with the musical notes as her own memories distorted and compacted her brain. Demons rose out of the darkness and scratched at the inside of her skull. As the recital finished, Amy Stern left the stage without making onto contact with her audience, her delicate frame awash with the tears. I remember from earlier, there's this whole thing about her being depressed and she, I guess, killed herself or something, and that's one of Beckett's traumas, but... <clears throat> I guess he sees it as something that happened, but I guess they're telling us she was always that way? Vibrant color, twisting and catching as she picked up a pace, leaving alone. Upright wooden box under the spotlight with a crowd's firecracker collapsed, transforming, breakdown into a performance. I guess Antrix Fix, he has seen his future. The first thing that hits him, a raw human heat, mixing of sweat, beats, heavy breathing. He moves his jacket and drapes it over his arm, picking the pocket for his wallet and holding onto the lighting. Stay safe, stay focused. <coughs> it's impossible to consider that Beckett will come across Joan by accident, and his description of her is vague. He only knows her skin color and a rainbow clash of cultures. But is this why you hear Beckett? What drives your pulse? Feed your aging loin, you poor, poor Beckett, all alone. Breathe in the heat, inhale its color, odor. Brush against the girls here and imagine if they know it's you existed. You don't exist. Never exist. Does that make you sad, Beckett? Poor, poor Beckett. Probably something meta there, too, with the fact that the game... <clears throat> the bar is mere steps away. Come on, Beckett. Move. Don't tell me you're tired. Old man Beckett. This is you. Go converse with the barmaid. You might find happiness there. That is... a scary picture. I dig your luck. What can I get you? For Joan. Alright. I'm new here. I totally do who she is. Fair enough. Get your drink. I'll mix you up with space rockets. It's my specialty. Allowed to argue. 
to the badge. It's meant to be ironic. Alright. Candy, by the way. That's me candy. This is ridiculous. She's looks like a blow doll. She squeaks like, you know, something. And she's working in one of these places, but she's a student paying for college. <laughs> Just take up for little people. Well, Faye considers Candy. She's a brilliant person. He hopes her life plays out kindly. I will say it is pretty cool how they put the visuals together for this game. Yeah, I know you, don't I? Make it a song. It could be anyone. Ha ha ha! at the building early yard early, looking for Perry. Hands eyes twitch in his skull, rolling around in meat lined sockets, skeletons wrapped in skin. Looking for Joan. That loser's still missing. Fuck man, ain't seen him here. Joan's over there by the stage. Might need to fight her off fight off a few to get to her. Music is too loud to hear the off the stage. <laughs> Let's give his neck. Turns his head. Looks at the eyes of Zabi, interlocking fingers. She smiles, but he knows it's there. He's held back by. Like, oh. <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna guide me. Hey beautiful, what brings you here? Should we go somewhere quiet? Amy's from the past. She knew Beckett when Amy was alive. They were young. Younger. She looks great for age. Beckett is torn. The past pulls at the present. He feels Joan escape. But it's free and realizes he was never here to find her. Well, that's disappointing. Jimmy leads him by the hand. Conversation privates between two people that share past. It lasts 20 minutes or more. Time is relevant. Nothing is gained from the encounter, but perhaps a sense of being. Xavier loves Beckett and cares from deeply. She knows his pain and will always be there from, but never part of his life again. I kind of like this. It's kind of like, hey, it's not important to the game. It happened, but you don't get to see it. It's a private conversation. I, I kind of like that part of they've done here with the with the uh, narrative. Bring it so close. They stand back and walk to the dance floor. I'll be fine this boy soon. Sounds like he needs help. Good thing you're doing, you know. Maybe you ain't been thinking a lot lately. I can drop it, please. Need some other time. If he kisses him on the forehead before he's swallowed by the crowds, Beckett stands motionless. Music becomes a soundtrack. Wait for me? He turns. Joan! Whoa, she is a bug. In a dream, Beckett walks through the club to another place. Beckett and Joan sit up with each other. In a minute, when Daddy's done with this. Okay. Uh, all right. She wears a necklace made of seashells. Oh, she measures with a crimson red nail. She's waiting, unsure why this man just dragged her from the dance floor. Unless the venture pays well, she'll get it in this neck for slacking. Oh, so. Uh, dwarf wasn't being mean or catty when she said she was a war. She literally is, I guess. Let me speak with you about Peregrine. Really? You're shitting me. Listen, I've been hired to find him. Don't take us a deep breath. You went on a date. Peter? Yeah, how'd you know? I'm an investigator, dude. Story of Peregrine and Joan. Whoa, trippy. Ah! These are some crazy graphics. I met at some bar. He was dressed so nicely, he made a huge effort, so I played long. He gave me some flowers, then pulled out a couple of tickets to some show at the theater. Man, what a dive that place is. I mean, who goes there? Then the show started. Everyone was so serious. I couldn't take it. I couldn't hold back the lecture. I think I even peed myself a bit. I could see his face turning red. His birthmark disappearing and bleeding into his eyes. Then he looked at me. He went inside and split. I saw something unnatural. So yeah, I got up and walked out. Then outside he started shouting at me. I couldn't believe it. I told him to fuck off, and he burst into tears. He apologized, wiped his eyes, and asked if he could walk me home. 
Tom again. His eyes softened, and he joked that the play was not that good. Good thing that we'd left when we did. Oh, I guess this uh, insect thing is like the brooch on her neck. Then on the way back, we bumped into Jack. I think he works with Perry at the site. He's a hunk. He comes to see me sometimes. Perry fell silent. I don't think he knew. I was feeling pretty bad because I spoiled his night, and I knew he'd planned it all to go a different way and everything. To my house near Monument Park, and we stood there. I said good night, and told me I could see he was on edge. I got my head, then apologized. It was still early, but I just wanted the night out. Then he said it. He'd been rehearsing. I could tell. He asked me if we could meet again. I said no. He pleaded that next time would be better, and then he'd not been well. He got me again harder this time. I pushed him off and left him standing on the pavement. He was standing there when I got to my room. You know, just staring into space. It started to rain. He was still standing there 20 minutes later. I was like, Paul, please. It's gone. Scary. Looks fed up, agitated. Look, I'm sort of busy, Joe said. Joe removes her necklace and drops it onto the table. A shrill pain spills through Beckett's head. Ice creams on the beach. Don't go near to see you drown. Keep your head above water, Beckett. This is his. No idea why I'm wearing it. It's fucking ugly. Necklace. Beckett picks up the necklace from the table and puts it in his coat pocket. The center spreads within. A creeping black tar from the heart. Look, if you do find him, will you tell him I'm sorry? I'll do that. Do you need anything else? Do you need me for anything else? Beckett puts the necklace in his coat pocket. He had tasted blood in his mouth. The investigation leading him nowhere. Where next? He grips the table and with effort raises himself. There's money in his wallet. Makes his way to the bar. Alright, I got... Oh, intoxicated. Because young, he's standing on an escalator. It's longer than any he's ever known. Infinite. Three steps ahead of him stands Amy. He can't see her face. He calls out, but every time his words are deafened by the sudden sounds of construction. Your friends from all, many friends all again hears the gentle clank of the escalator rotation. Eternal. With his heavy feet struggling to move upwards, determined step by step. All of his efforts put into movement. His whole body is strained and feeling feels numb and oversized. Where are you going? Asks his mother, always by his side. The ketchup, Beckett replies. Well, hurry along, she encourages. Beckett struggles up another step. Beckett feels old and weak. Get back into the... Puts everything into his last step and is at last standing behind me. Reaches out and grasps her hand. It is damp. Beneath the cracked nail, there is soil. It slips smoothly over bones beneath. Then closes around Beckett's. He smiles. Happiness! Momentary. Pressure grows. The grip tightens. Beckett starts to scream. Let me go! Turns to his mother for support. She no longer exists. There's only Amy. This kid stretches beyond any horizon. Stop torturing. The young boy pleads. Be stop. Right. I think that's it for Yay. And Eric playing a Beckett. Always a strange experience. Next time. Bye.